What's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's Kevin Forte and today we are going to be taking a look at the latest on the contract situation surrounding Ottawa Senators center Shane Pinto. Now Shane Pinto is in an interesting situation with the Ottawa Senators. His current contract situation is making things quite difficult for the Senators going into this season. Now, it's an interesting situation for Pierre Dorian, the GM of the Senators, as this is the first time in a while that the Ottawa Senators are scraping toward the top of the salary cap. Um, they're right toward the ceiling of the salary cap, and that is an issue when you have a around a million dollars of cap space and you want to re-sign a guy like Shane Pinto, who is well more, as well, should be more compensated than a million dollars. So, that puts the Senators in a little bit of a bind. And I think the solution will be pretty easy to predict here. Unless something crazy or dramatic happens, they will be able to figure it out. It's just going to be kind of interesting how it actually gets done here. So, looking at, at Shane Pinto, he's a 22-year-old young forward. He's put up some really good numbers in his first couple years in Ottawa. And... What's good about the Senators is they have a lot of good center depth. And that's where the solution here is pretty obvious. It's just more so of getting enough leverage to actually make the deal. And you may be asking yourself, well, what do you mean by that, Kevin? So basically, the Ottawa Senators' current cap situation is in a spot where I'm looking at a guy right now in the Senators lineup that could be moved and could be fairly easy to move now the issue is again teams know that the senators are trying to re-sign pinto so the only reason they'd be making this trade would be to move out the salary to keep pinto so there has to be some incentive for the other team because they know even if they just trade him out well they're going to get their the value for the senators isn't necessarily even what they get in return in this package, it's more so moving out the salary. That's the real value for the Senators. And that's where a team could take advantage of the Ottawa Senators in this situation. It's not a great situation for Pierre Dorian, and that's why maybe this process is a little bit longer than you'd probably like. But I think if they could come to a number first with Shane Pinto, kind of agree to it under the table, and then come back and say, all right, well, if that's the number, then we'll move out this player and we'll make sure we get it done. And I think that's kind of the scenario that the Ottawa Senators are in. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, who is that player, Kevin, that the Ottawa Senators could move that would make this probably work? And that player is Matthew Joseph. Uh, he's got three years left on his deal, making $2.95 million per season. This is the guy that everybody is expecting would become expendable. Now, he's in the second year of a four-year deal here with the Ottawa Senators, but I think a lot of teams would like this certainty with him there. You look at his last couple years, you know, his time in Ottawa has actually been fairly good. His first season in Ottawa at the end of the 21-22 season, he picked up 11, uh, picked up 12 points in 11 games. Yeah, he was over a point per game for the Sens that season. Last season, his numbers definitely came back more to reality. But basically throughout his entire career... In a 50-60 to 60 game schedule, because that's about how much he's played, he picks up anywhere between 17 to 20 points a season, which isn't bad. Now, again, for almost $3 million, that is a little bit expensive for 20 points. You could get a guy on a rookie contract making a million, dollars $950,000 to put up 20 points for 50 to 60 games. So that's kind of where the issue is here for the senders. It's the lack of leverage to move out Matthew Joseph. Because I think in reality, if the Senators are to move out the Quebec native here, Matthew Joseph, chances are they're going to have to trade a draft pick to move him out. And that kind of sucks because not only is it not a great look for you know, Matthew Joseph and kind of puts him in a tough spot, it's also not a great look for Pierre Dorian because he signed that contract two years ago. So now he's going back on his word and now doing something like that, not really the best look. The reality is I'm looking at a situation here where they might have to give up a fourth round pick in Matthew Joseph and get something in return or maybe future considerations or something like that. I think that's what the Senators could be looking to do here. That would free them up $2.95 million this season. That would put them right around $3 million of cap space, which would inevitably allow them to re-sign Shane Pinto. 
Now, that's not the end of the story, though, because now you still have to re-sign Shane Pinto. So what does his number look like? So they moved out Matthew Joseph in this, this alternate universe. They move out Shane Pinto. Now you have some cap space to work with. Well, you're probably spending all that $3 million on bringing back Shane Pinto on probably a one, maybe a two-year deal max. I don't see anything long-term here for Pinto, especially at $3 million. You could argue he's even worth more than that. And the best contract comparable I could find for a guy like Shane Pinto actually resides in Washington today. And it's a little bit of a different story because Shane Pinto and Dylan Strom, their path to the NHL was a little bit different. Um, you know, obviously there was a lot of, of trial and tribulation for Dylan Strom in his NHL career, but based off this situation, I think this could work out. Back in 2020, Stan Bowman and the Blackhawks signed Dylan Strom to a two-year contract, $6 million, that's $3 million, and that took him um, for a couple of seasons coming out of his entry-level contract. So a two-year deal, $3 million per year. Now that allowed him to get to the point where he ended up signing for $3.5 million for a one-year deal before inevitably uh, going to the Capitals and signing that big ticket, which he signed this past summer. I think that gap is going to be closed, though. I don't think Pinto is going to need that one-year prove-it deal after a two-year contract here. I think he's going to sign a two-year, $3 million contract and probably get somewhere, bet depending on how his career trajectory goes, anywhere between 5 to $8 million per season. I think Shane Pinto is that talented. He is that good. And on this Senators team, he's going to be able to put up points. He's going to be on the power play. He's going to get opportunities. So I think for the Senators, you're looking at a two-year deal max, like I said, similar to Dylan Strom, a two-year deal, $3 million, and chances are you're going to have to pay the piper in two years from now because Shane Pinto is going to raise his value in two years. And like I said, the issue here as well is Shane Pinto's value is going to go up a lot in two years, and that's where you start walking the line. He's 22. He'll be 24, 25 years old. Now you're starting to have to buy free agency years off his deal, and that's where it gets even more expensive for a guy like Pinto. So that's kind of what you're looking at here for Shane Pinto. Now, I've heard a couple of things here. So are the Senators getting any closer with RFA Shane Pinto? It's never great to start training camp without RFA signed, and this is from Sportsnet. But the Senators opened without Pinto, the 20-goal scorer on the third line last year. Uh, complicating things is they have no cap space, $1.3 million. I would say it's even less than that right now, according to Cap Friendly. Um, and there's no way he's going to make a million dollars. That's where they bring up how Matthew Joseph might have to get moved out. I think that is the inevitable thing here. Um, and what's interesting, too... Um, we heard a little bit, we heard, we heard some comments, and you know I think Ottawa's made it very clear that barring a situation that absolutely forces them to trade Shane Pinto, and I'm curious to see what that would take, they're not trading him, they want to keep him. So that's from Elliot Friedman. So if Elliot Friedman's saying that they are not trading him, unless there is like a dire situation where they absolutely have to, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to get to that point. If we do ever get to that point, though... I have heard that the Flyers have been in the conversation about Pinto. As crazy as it sounds, I've even heard stuff about them, maybe even looking at Zegras. Again, I'm not saying... I, I really haven't talked about those rumors because I think they are a little far-fetched. They're very far-fetched, let's be honest. They're far-fetched rumors, but they're things that I've heard in the circle. And I think Danny Briere is doing his due diligence. That's his job, to call and at least see what's going on there. There's definitely a reason there's a strong link between the Flyers and Zegras and Pinto and all these other young forwards that are RFAs, but... I don't see that actually coming to fruition. In my estimate, it's not going to happen. Pinto's going to stay in Ottawa. He's an Ottawa senator. There's a reason, I think, as well, that they are bringing in Josh Bailey because Josh Bailey came in. Hats off to him. He was a great Islander for a very long time. But Matthew Joseph's spot is expendable, and they could get a guy like Josh Bailey on making league minimum for 700 to 900 k for this season in the capacity that Matthew Joseph could have done. And I think that's something that we have to watch for here as well. I think they're waiting to see also how well Josh Bailey plays because, hey, here's our replacement for Joseph. All right, now it's easier to move Matthew Joseph for whatever the price could be, right? Um, so like I said, the Senators would probably have to add a sweetener in any deal, like a pick or a prospect. And Friedman reported that the Flyers have been buzzing around the situation. So maybe the Senators end up getting a deal done where they trade Joseph and a draft pick to the Flyers. Instead of Pinto going to the Flyers, it could potentially be Matthew Joseph. So 
keep an eye out on that. I think the Senators will work things out with Shane Pinto. Like I said, shout out to the uh, the New York kid here from Franklin Square, New York. Uh, Shane Pinto is a very talented hockey player. I'm really excited to see what he does in the future. He complements this team so well with some of those guys like Tim Stuchla, uh, Brady Kachuk. You know, Brady Kachuk kind of chimed in the other day saying he understands the whole contract situation. He's been there before. You know, he remembers not too long ago being in a very similar situation here to Pinto, but. You know, the Ottawa Senators, Dorian, kind of put himself in a bind here. Um, that's not that's lack of foresight there uh, by Pierre Dorian. He knew damn well what was going to happen here. And now, you know, the same team that might be trying to go after Pinto is also maybe in the running for Matthew Joseph. That puts the, that puts the Senators at a lack of leverage here with the Philadelphia Flyers because the Flyers are going to say, hey, listen, we don't like that package. And if, you know, you don't figure this out, either A, you're just going to have Shane Pinto sit on the sidelines all season and force a trade, or B, you give us what we want. And I think Danny Briere, shout out to him, he's doing a great job here because he's catching Pierre Dorian and the Senators with their pants down, and I think he's going to take advantage of an opportunity to bring in a pretty talented player, whether it's Matthew Joseph or Shane Pinto. Obviously, you'd prefer to have Shane Pinto here, but they might be able to get a decent draft pick here from the Senators in this deal as well. Like I said, it, I don't expect them to trade their second round pick for Matthew jo and Matthew Joseph just to move him. It could happen, though. If there's enough leverage and the Senators are desperate enough and the fire is underneath Pierre Dorian enough and ownership maybe makes him make a move, we could see what happens here. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of the Ottawa Senators and Shane Pinto? Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.